Good morning YouTube. This is Cruise Man here at Awake in Carrollton, Texas. And I'm just getting ready to head back to the house. Had breakfast uh, once again with uh, my friend Don Smith. You can check out his uh, channel at texastulane.com. He's got some uh, interesting videos over there. And he and I were comparing notes on a new product that I'm reviewing that uh, he also has been testing out. Hang on a second. I've got to get my stuff going here. Parking lot's kind of crowded today. And let me tell you, it is an absolutely beautiful day. We have just been getting some incredible weather. I don't know why it's so unseasonably cool. After all the heat we were having, we had a cool front move in a couple of days ago. And right now, it is 73 degrees. It was actually 67 degrees this morning when I left the house to come meet Don. And it is just really amazing weather. No wind. Just beautiful. So anyway, I hope you guys are all having a good day today. I thought I'd catch you up on a few things. My last video, I talked about uh, Max McAllister's video on the steering spindle. And man, does that open up a firestorm of debate on the 2018 Honda Goldwing. So I just want to update you on some revelations and more information and Max has come out with another video where he goes into a little more detail on this issue and I have been getting tons of emails and comments and people I think some people are very concerned over the safety of the steering mechanism on this Goldwing and I don't think personally that you need to panic. Uh, Honda has exceptional engineering. Now that's not to discount what Max has talked about in his video. Uh, he makes some excellent points. And it seems to be the, the biggest uh, concern is the use of an aluminum spindle for this steering head. And why Honda chose to use aluminum instead of steel, I have no idea. Um, maybe it was cost, maybe I doubt that it would be weight, because I doubt that it would save that much weight to be significant, especially on such a, an important part. But let me tell you the good news. And I understand Max talked about you know, when you get on the motorcycle, you lift with the handlebars and you can cause this flexing motion. But, uh, you know, uh, honestly, when I get on the motorcycle, I use my weight uh, to straighten the bike up more than I do lifting with the handlebar. So I think you can mitigate that flexing uh, by using your weight properly. What I do basically is when I sit down on the bike, the bike kind of wants to ride itself. It kind of wants to go toward the center line of the bike because you've added that, that weight. You've increased the center of gravity to a higher point, especially if the steering wheel is straight. If your tire is straight, the motorcycle wants to be vertical. It wants to be up and down. It doesn't really want to be leaning over. Now, if you're on a hill or an incline, uh, that can be a different situation where you will have to uh, use the handlebars more. But even regardless of all that, I really um, don't think it, this is a cause for panic. I still think this is probably one of, if not the safest, motorcycles you can own. You're much more likely to get injured or worse on this motorcycle because of how you ride the motorcycle. 
I wouldn't worry too much about the steering spindle. It's something that you should be aware of and it's something that you can certainly uh, deal with if the opportunity arises. And obviously, uh, if you have any play in your handlebars, you need to get that checked immediately. I have one gentleman who watched my last video and he noticed some play in his handlebars and he immediately took it to the dealer and he claimed that the uh, it basically failed the test and he's having to wait to have it repaired and that video you know that could have saved him <laughs> either a lot of money or possible uh, even worse so fortunately he watched that video and got some good information out of it so do I think Honda needs to do more yes I think Honda should probably maybe even issue a recall or at least uh, inform everybody better of what's going on. Now I should also emphasize, and I didn't do this in my last video, I should also emphasize that this service bulletin and this issue is only for the 2018 model Goldwing. Apparently Honda revised the, the torque specifications at the factory on the 2019s and later. Now that doesn't mean that the later models don't still have this aluminum spindle and could potentially fail over time. I'm sure that could happen. Or like Max said, if you drop your bike and the handlebars get a significant impact, uh, it might be something to be concerned about. But all of this is anecdotal at this point. There's no real scientific testing yet to know about this and I'm sure Honda now is aware of it. I think a bigger concern for me is that with 26,000 plus subscribers on YouTube, why by now I don't have a contact at Honda to discuss these things with? We're just kind of left to talk about these things with no real information from Honda. I'm really surprised that somebody in Honda's media department or social media department hasn't reached out to us uh, to kind of get ahead of these things. But they haven't. And I think some of you think I have a contact at Honda that I can, that I can reach out to. But I don't. So until that day happens, I'm just kind of left like you are, you know, to figure this stuff out on our own. I do like the idea that Max has of them producing a stainless steel spindle. Um, I don't know if I would go in and replace the spindle if I weren't experiencing any issues. But uh, I do like the idea that should the opportunity present itself, where you're having your steering worked on anyway, uh, perhaps replacing it with the stainless steel spindle would be a good thing to do. And I also like that little safety pin that uh, Max came, a, came up with that you slip down in that spindle so that should the spindle suffer catastrophic failure, uh, you wouldn't be completely left without any control of the motorcycle. I think that's a great little thing to add. A lot of you have sent me messages and asked me how I recommend that you tie down the motorcycle on a trailer. And I have responded by saying that I have never used a trailer with this motorcycle. And in Max's latest video, he does show the, a product from Gold Strike uh, where it provides uh, tie down points on the front of the bike. And I, I agree with Max. I think that's probably a good idea. And I'm surprised Honda doesn't include that on the bike too, or something similar. Um, so I think if you follow how Honda ties the bike down to a crate when they ship the bike to the dealer, you would probably be very safe in uh, tying the bike to a trailer that way. However, that would require that you remove the seat because when the bike comes in from Honda in a crate, they have strapped it over the seat area or actually underneath the seat. And I'm gonna pull in here. I've got a couple of little things I gotta do. So when it comes to tying the bike down to a trailer, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule but uh, I know you can use those front 
tip over bars if you take the covers off uh, you can use this product from Gold Strike uh, you could also use the rear tip over bars just have to take off the little plastic covers but I am not an expert on tying a bike down to a trailer because I've never done it. And the only time I've ever had to have any motorcycle tied down to a trailer was when uh, I experienced uh, some uh, damage. I hit some road debris with my 2012 and the bike had to be towed to the dealer because the engine case got cracked and it lost all the oil. So uh, in that case, I did have to go to, you know, use a trailer and they tied it down no problem but on the new bike never had to do that fortunately so I'll probably be getting that bracket from Gold Strike or come up with a similar solution I also got an email from Joe who owns a 2019 Goldwing and I'm only talking about this because I want to reach out and see if any of you have experienced this he has a new bike with maybe 500 miles on it, and I think even when he rode it home from the dealer the first time he said when it gets to about 2500 RPM, he notices a pretty severe buzzing sound. And apparently the buzzing sound does not increase when the RPMs increase, but it starts at about 2500 RPM and it just remains constant and apparently is extremely annoying to the point that he doesn't even really want to ride the bike. Now, I've never experienced that. I've never heard of this before. Uh, his dealer is stumped, his dealer has ridden the bike, and he can also verify that this buzzing exists, this buzzing sound. And um, I didn't know if any of you out there might have had a similar experience on a 2018 to 2020, where you're riding the bike, you get to 2500 RPM, and you notice this loud buzzing. Um, I just want to throw that out to you to see if anybody out there has that. Please put it in the comments down below. Also, make sure to check out uh, our Facebook pages because if you have any maintenance questions or if you have anything you can help other people with, that's the place to go. We've got one page for the 2001 to 2017 Goldwing and another page, another group I should say, for the 2018 plus Honda Goldwing. So check out those Facebook groups. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, we'll have some new review videos coming out very soon on new products. I've got a special announcement for the YouTube channel coming up next week. So um, thanks again for joining us today. And uh, ride safe out there. Talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.